again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we got another vlog. Is Blitz elitist? Well, that's a question that a lot of people ask. But in a word, no, I don't think it is. So thank you for watching my video. It was fantastic film. Don't forget, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do so. It's a lovely thing to do. You can email your replays to Fujits Blitz at wait a minute. I'm joking, of course that's not the end of the bloody video. But it does raise an interesting point. I mean, we're talking about opinions here. And what is elitism anyway? Well, strictly speaking, elitism is where a particular section of society is treated differently because they have a certain skill, background, or whatever. And this is what raises the interesting point. Now, realistically, there are two types of feelings towards elitism in Blitz. One, that... It's only for certain skill levels, certain people with certain backgrounds who get everything for them, um, and or people with money. So let's deal with the first one first. A, a lot of people do think that, you know, if you've got a certain win rate, or you've got a certain skill level, or you're in a certain clan, etc., etc., that Blitz and Wargaming treat you differently. Well, excuse the language, but that's utter fucking bollocks. The reason I say that is the following. Regardless of your win rate, regardless of how many battles you've taken part in, regardless of how long you've been in this game, you, real, in real terms, have the same opportunities as everybody else. If you take the best player in the best clan on, on whatever server in Blitz, they have no more or no greater opportunity than the lowest battle count, the worst player with the worst win rate in Blitz. They are able to, you know, enter the same competitions. They are able to purchase the same tanks. They are able to do exactly the same as anybody else. And this is the point. So when people say, yes, Blitz has become elitist, has it? I don't think it has. What has happened is that we, the players, make it elitist, not the game and its owners and developers, in my honest opinion. I mean, look at the evidence. It's, it's us, the player base, that are infatuated with win rate, battle count, etc, etc. It's not the game. And that's just human nature, because humans, by our very nature, most of us are competitive and we like shiny things. So, you know, if we, we feel comfortable and happy and good of, within ourselves, if we've got super unicum status with, you know, a 70% win rate. And when we don't have that, we feel less comfortable and less confident. And we look for excuses as to why we don't have those win rates, funnily enough. And you see it all the time. We, we blame other people for our poor decisions on the battlefield. And I'm not saying that you know every time you play blitz every time you lose it's because of you and your poor decisions of course it's not but we always seek to blame others we never realistically blame ourselves and that's just human nature i'm afraid how many times have you rolled out in a battle for example looked at the team list seen a member on the opposite team who's a member of a well-known clan regardless of whether you know that player or not and instantly thought, doomed and gloomed, we're going to lose. Well, that's us. That's not wargaming doing that. It's certainly not the game doing that. Or how many times do we see, you know, a novice player or a new player or a low win rate player doing something that you find ridiculous and then turn around and say, God, oh, what a noob, delete the game, play the lower tiers, etc., etc. Again, that is us doing that. It's not wargaming doing that. And it's certainly not the game. We bring these parameters of elitism into the game, unfortunately. The game does not have them. Honestly, any player can enter the Twister Cup. And if you're good enough and, you're, and you, get, you get a team that is good enough, you can compete and you yourself can go to the Twister Finals. Now, it would be stupid of everybody to think that we are all good enough to take part in a competition of that level because we're not but that doesn't make the game elitist another thing you need to look at is this how many times have you rolled out in a battle when some of the bigger names have been 
on the other side, or even in your team. I mean, for example, I play on the EU server predominantly. I've rolled out many times when I've played with the likes of R1B, Meadzy, Messi, Martin Dogger, you know, all these well-known people. Or I, I've seen on the other side clans like Endgame or Loka, etc., etc. And you know what I think? I mean, I think it's fantastic because that would be like me playing for my local pub football team and rolling out against Liverpool, who I don't particularly like, but at the moment they're sort of dominating England's Premier League. And it would be me playing alongside the likes of Mohamed Salah, etc., etc. You will never get such an opportunity in the real world to play that type of thing. Yet this game allows us that opportunity. We are able to play with those players who are, you know, superstars effectively, pro gamers. And that is amazing. And that, to me, makes this game not elitist. I mean, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the fact that I can roll out either in a team or against some of the best players and some of the most well-known players in Blitz. And it puts a smile on my face. It, it doesn't make me feel nervous. It doesn't make me feel, you know, inadequate. I absolutely love it. And I really do to compare it as if I was playing in my local pub football team, you know, which is just a bunch of guys you get together on a Sunday playing the likes of Liverpool's first team or any Premier League first team or even the likes of Spurs. You know, when, when, I've, when I've been matched up with the likes of R1B or Messi, etc., it's like I've just been rolled out into a local five-a-side team and Lionel Messi or Ronaldo's playing. And you've got to look at it this way, guys. Trust me. Well, you don't have to trust me. But my attitude is, whilst the game may appear elitist, it isn't. Now, for a long time, I thought that maybe it is a little bit elitist because they only bring in certain tanks and the grand culling that was 5.5, etc, etc. But you know what? It's us, as I said, it's us, the players, who make it elitist. It's not the game. I don't believe the game is elitist. I think we ourselves make it elitist from that perspective. The other side of elitism is money. And, you know, this has always been a bane of society, I'm afraid. Take, for example, traffic fines. If you're rich and can afford it, then what is the incentive for you not to follow the traffic rules? You just pay the fine. I know in some countries they have points, which means you eventually lose your license. But, for example, I live in a country where, as long as I can afford to pay the fines, I can speed all I like to an extent. So there's no incentive for me not to keep to the speed limit. If I, unless, of course, I'm poor, and then I have to keep the speed limit because I can't afford to bloody do it. Blitz is no different to that extent. Um, I mean, the player base, realistically, is not millennials. I mean, it's 20, 30-somethings, sometimes rising to the 40-somethings, like me. Yay! So, you know, it's it aimed at a player base, realistically, that does have money. And Wargaming is a business. Now, they're not trying to price you out. They're not trying to make it elitist. They're just trying to run their business. This game is free to play. You don't need to spend a penny in real terms. It'll take you a long time to get up there, and you won't get some of those premium tanks, which a lot of people think are OP. I get that. I understand that. But it doesn't favour one class of person over another. It doesn't favour we only want the people with money over the we don't want the people without money. If they didn't want the people without money, guys, if they didn't want the, the, the non-rich, so to speak, then this would not be a free-to-play game. Having money makes your life easier, of course, but in the real world, it makes your life easier. And this is sometimes the interesting part about gaming. It is a microcosm of the real world. You know, in all the foibles, the weaknesses, and the strengths that you have in the real world come to fruition in the game. You know, you will have rich people playing it, you will have poor people playing it. You have highly educated people playing it, you have not so educated people playing it. That, this game doesn't differentiate. You know, if you haven't got a university education, it doesn't mean to say you're not going to get an E100, realistically. Okay, but if you don't have, you know, a source of income, 
then maybe you can't buy the $50 Chimera that I get. I understand that part of it. But, you know, this game is not elitist in that respect. Sometimes I do struggle with the pricing, I admit. And I guarantee you this for a fact, you know, you if you wanted all the tanks in the game, in real terms, then you, you need to be a Russian oligarch. But let's be honest, it's a ballot Russian game. They probably do have Russian oligarchs playing it. Who knows? And maybe their pricing structure is tailored that way. Or maybe, just maybe, their pricing structure is tailored this way because we, the player base, continue to buy the bloody tanks. And if you continue to buy them at the prices that they're listed, if you continue to buy the crates at the prices that are listed, then they're going to continue to churn them out. Because if it earns you money, why change it? The only time that they will change these parameters is when the player base, and there's a lot of players, not just in the EU server, there's a lot of servers as well, stops buying. And then when collectively the whole group says, no, we're not buying crates anymore, they will stop putting tanks into crates. But as the demand is there, why cease the supply? Simple as that. And this is what we tend to forget, guys, at the end of the day. It's Wargame is a business. You know, they don't, they don't just do things for the good of their heart. But they do give us a lot of free stuff, to be honest. You know, you can do this game free. You don't need to spend a penny. And you do get a lot in return. But it doesn't make the game and it doesn't make wargaming elitist. Well, I don't think it is. And I truly do not believe, despite the fact that sometimes I have a little bitch and moan to myself, ooh, it's elitist. I don't think it is. When I, when I cut to the bare bones... I don't think it is. I personally think it is us, the players, that bring this elitist element in. That we, the players, you know, whinge and moan and brag about win rates, etc., or battle counts, or whatever. We, the players, buy the tanks. We, the players, buy the crates. We fuel the fire. Simple fact of life. The game itself doesn't bring in elitist parameters. You can all take part in every competition. You can all buy the tanks. You've all got access to the same things that the top players have. In real terms. If you want their super duper camo, play ratings all the time and get up there and get your super duper camo. Nothing prevents you from doing that. The only thing preventing you is you. And this brings me up to the next point. If we started giving everybody everything if we didn't have i mean look one of the problems i have with this game is the following far from being elitist there is actually nothing in real terms for the veteran players to embrace not really if you think about it long and hard let's take it let's say you're a veteran player let's say you entered this game way back in 2014 when it came out on, on, on iPhone, etc., etc., And you've grinded your way along the tiers. And you've got all the tanks in the tech tree. Okay, every now and then a new tank will come out. But the chances are you will have enough XP to buy those tanks outright. You don't need to grind them. The chances are you don't need any XP because you've got all your crew skills. The chances are you've got millions of credits. So you don't need the boosters. So let me ask you this. If you were a veteran player, what keeps you, the veteran player, in the game? Well, nothing apart from improving your stats. That's the only thing that really keeps you in the game. You know, unless, of course, you're a tank collector, then you can buy another premium tank or you can, or you just wait for the new tanks to come out in the tech tree. But aside from that, there is nothing to keep you in the game. You don't need the boosters. You don't need the credits. And you don't need the XP in real terms. And, you know, you may not be in a clan that does tournaments. You may not have a win rate to be taken on by a clan that does, you know, main tour, major tournaments. You just never know. But there is nothing in real terms to keep you in the game. Okay, you can do ratings. But let's be honest, the rewards for ratings isn't that great. You get, you know, reduced pricings. You know, depending on your rating, and you may get a camo. But is that really going to sort of entice you enough to keep you in the game? No, it doesn't. 
So if it was a truly elitist game, then I would personally like to think that the elitist side would be towards the veterans because they're the ones who are going to spend the money over, more over than the newer player. Funnily enough, the newer player may dabble in buying a premium tank, but the veteran players, if they want to do, you know, they're, they're more likely to buy a premium tank because they've already got all the tech tree tanks. So that's why I don't think it's elitist. And I really do think Wargaming should look at something to keep the veteran players involved and enticed because I don't think it's there. I think they should run, you know, there should be better rewards in the ratings. I think they should run tournaments other than just the Twister. They should do, you know, I don't know, maybe 2v2, two, two 1v1, two, one one, who knows. It doesn't matter. They should run more of those, I think. They've done it in, in the past and they should do it again. And I really love the fact that they're doing these ratings tournaments at the moment. And I love the fact they're doing realistic mode tournaments at the moment. I mean, it's it, it clear to me that Wargaming is seriously looking at these things. And unlike World of Tanks, you know, from where I'm sat, I think the, the tournament side and the eSports side of Blitz uh, is a lot more promising. So I don't think it's elitist. Not in any way, shape or form. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That's been my two pennies worth. I'm an opinionated son of a bitch. By all means, don't think that the um, replays I've been showing you has anything to do with elitism. It doesn't. I just wanted to show you people's replays in the background while I'm on my soapbox having a chat. And like I said at the beginning, guys, by all means, if you haven't already, press subscribe. It's a lovely thing to do. Comment, like, and all the other stuff below. By all means, send me your replays to fujitsblitz at gmail.com or you can even post them to my Discord server your call. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because seriously, guys, I can't emphasize this enough. That is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.